is 9.03. We are jumping in. Last week, um, I had to reschedule on, I don't remember, Tuesday. It was Tuesday. I thought I could make it back in time and I just couldn't do it. So we rescheduled our seller presentation. So today's normally script. So we're going to talk about your seller presentation as well as talk about that listing presentation, actually delivering it um, and what that looks like. So I am, um, you guys have access to a free listing presentation. If you go in to your one design, so your little one login, and then you go down to one design. There's two different options. One is one design print center and one is one design creative studio. You want to go to your one design creative studio from there. If you go into templates, search and type in listing. it will magically search and find you the listing presentation. So listing presentation is what you're looking for. It may take a couple moments to load. So hopefully mine is open and doesn't have to reload. Although it seems to get angry at me. So we'll get it to reload again. It takes a little bit um, of time. Um, in addition to that, I'm also going to share with you guys um, our listing presentation, although we haven't tweaked ours in a while, so you may take pieces of both of it. Um, so we'll wait. Well, if I wait for if I leave this, it may not come back. Let's let's start over here. Hold on. Yeah, I purposely preloaded this so that we wouldn't have this issue and then we still have the issue because if you go away from it for too long, then it goes blank. So let's reload it. Um, I would highly recommend that when we talk about our listing presentation that your goal is to drop off a pre-listing packet with your potential seller, right? So we're gonna set the appointment with the seller. Um, you're gonna run a CMA report or a, excuse me, a market analysis for your clients um, or potential clients so that you can um, see kind of where, what their home value is. Oftentimes in my questions that I'm gonna ask when I'm setting the listing appointment, I'm gonna ask them if they have an idea of what they think they would like to list it for. The reason I'm gonna ask that is I wanna know if I'm in the ballpark of what they're thinking. Because if they're like, man, I'm gonna sell it for, six, I'm thinking 600,000. The neighbor down the street sold their house for 600,000. I'm thinking we can sell the same. And then I go run comps on it and I'm looking at like your house is, you know, half the square footage of the neighbor that sold for 600,000. Then I know I'm gonna be having to to come across with the price a little more softly, right? <laughs> and I'm uh, gonna have to be a little bit more strategic versus if they're like, oh, I think I think it could list for about 600,000 and I pull comps and I'm like, man, this is 625 easily. Now I know that I'm gonna come in and be the hero. I'm not gonna have to work as hard to get to the price agreement on that property, right? So I usually will ask them in that pre-listing. We want to, as we're setting that appointment, um, we want to establish their ready, willing, and able sellers, right? So are they able to sell? You know, a question that you may ask there would be like, um, you know, if they know the balance of their existing mortgage or the approximate balance of their existing mortgage. They're like, man, we owe 550 on it. And you look at comps and you're like, this property is barely worth 520. Then you know that they may not be able, right? So that might keep them out of able, or we may have to shift gears and go into some sort of like a short sale type discussion, depending on the reason that they're looking to move, right? So we want to find out their motivation in that phone call where we're setting the appointment. Ideally, we would like to know this stuff up front. So we want to just determine whether they're ready, willing, and able. Are they, what's their motivation? Why are they looking to sell? Is it, actually possible price money owed for them to sell. Um, right. So we want to establish all of those things. And sometimes people may be like ready to sell. They may be able to sell, but they may not be willing or they may be willing to sell. They may be able 
people to sell, but they're not quite ready, right? They have things that need to be done in order to get that property sold for top dollar. Maybe they're in the middle of something. Maybe they're looking at purchasing a new home, right? And we know that there's going to be this lag time between them entering into contract on the replacement home versus um, when it's actually going to close. Like it could be eight, nine months out right? So they may not be quite ready. We may need to discuss those options with them. So we really want to try to establish the ready, willing, and ableness before we sit down with them to go through a full listing presentation. Um, that being said, if I run into somebody in an open house and they're like, oh yeah, but we would have to sell our house in order to um, you know, purchase forward, then um, we may want to just schedule a quick walkthrough of their property. It may not even be a listing presentation. We may just want to schedule that walkthrough so that we can establish kind of what the home looks like, um, kind of have a baseline. And then at that appointment, when we're doing the walkthrough, we would set a secondary time to talk with them about listing the property. Um, the idea behind the walkthrough would be to get a good handle on the condition of the property, any updates that need to be done, suggestions that you may wanna make during the listing presentation. So it may be a conversation at that open house of, oh, fabulous. Um, tell you what, why don't I schedule time? Um, I'm actually free, the, the open house ends at two today. So by the time I pick up signs and have some free time, do you mind if I swing by your house today at 2.30? We'll just do a quick walkthrough. I'll make some notes and then we can set a time to sit down and go through and talk about what it would look like listing your property. But that way I can run you a fairly accurate market analysis of um, what we would recommend for the listing price of your property. Does that make sense? And they're gonna be like, oh yeah, absolutely. Or they may be like, oh my gosh, it's so dirty. And you're like, that's okay. I'm not judging your housekeeping skills at this point. I know before you put your house on the market, you're going to get it cleaned up and it's going to be amazing and look beautiful, just like a model home. And, but today I'm just checking out like floor plan and updates so that I can run that, that market analysis on it, right? So we want to get in there and do that walkthrough. I will also do a quick walkthrough of a property for somebody who maybe isn't quite ready to sell. I know they're not ready to sell. They're really looking at like a year down the road or six months down the road. We may go do a walkthrough to make notes and give them some pointers of things they can do between now and then that would help them get their property in the condition that we would want it in in order to receive top dollar. Okay, does that make sense to everybody? Yes, so spend, Yeah, so spending 15 to you know 30 minutes doing a quick walkthrough is different than spending an hour with somebody going through a full listing presentation. And before I wanna go through that full listing presentation, I wanna have a pretty good handle that they're ready, willing, and able. Um, so here, in in addition to that, um, then I'm going to set that appointment, right? Maybe a quick walkthrough. I may not do a quick walkthrough of their property before we sit down for the listing appointment, but I always want kind of some time to schedule that listing appointment. I want to know if they're planning to meet with any other agents, right? Things that you may want to ask. Are you planning to interview additional agents, right? I want to know where I am in that mix. Am I the first one they're meeting with? Am I the last one they're meeting with? I want to know kind of where I'm at. And then in addition, I'm going to drop off a pre-listing packet. That pre-listing packet is going to be basically my listing presentation in written format. So they have a chance to review the information before I get to their house. My goal is to narrow down that listing appointment as um, short as possible so that I'm not spending a ton of time getting the listing agreement signed. So if they have a chance to review that packet ahead of time, especially for those analytical sellers or those people that like to review all the data and read every line. If they have an opportunity to review that before I get there, we're going to be in a much better spot because now I'm just answering questions and handling objections rather than going through the entire presentation. So what would I include in my pre-listing packet? Um, we'll come back to this one. Hopefully it doesn't black out on us again. Um, this would be similar to our pre-listing packet, it needs to be re-edited and updated, but um, it's got a little dear future home seller. It's got a, a letter. Let's see if I can blow that up. Oh, wait, hold on. I thought it would happen automatically, but I actually have to click on the screen, right? In our experience, do has think better than one. 
And no one individual succeeds alone. We're a team, right, with over 25 years of experience. So it's just kind of like our bio. We're based out of Vacaville, um, right? We've already started this by creating a comprehensive market analysis of this property. In this packet, you'll find information that will give you the basic idea of the current market and tips for preparing your home to go on the market. This will get your house ready to go on the market as soon as possible. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact us. We are here to help with our contact information, right? So just introducing the packet. Then I've got a page on our goal for the appointment, right? Get to know you better, answer all your questions, ask you important information and determine if we should work together, right? Next page. So it's just kind of an intro, the difference between selling and sold. This just kind of builds my value. What is my value proposition is kind of this next page, right? We're going to assist you in pricing your home correctly for this market, help you stage your home and get it ready for market, professional photos that showcase your property's best features, um, professional marketing materials, 24-7 marketing online, actively prospect for buyers for your home, ideally art locally and outside your immediate area. Um, excite other realtors to show your home, negotiate the best terms possible for today's conditions and your needs, support during the escrow period with repair negotiation, communication with the buyer's agent and lender to make sure deadlines in the contract are adhered to, and that we close escrow on time, appraisal support by preparing a package that supports the contract price and meeting with the appraiser to ensure a successful appraisal, communicate with you so that you always know what's going on, right? So I'm just building that value proposition. What is your value proposition? What do you bring to the table, right? So that's kind of that page. Then I've got a marketing strategy. It just kind of touches on the different types of marketing that will be done for their property. Um, in addition, I've got like a example of our marketing calendar, pre-listing marketing calendar, new listing marketing calendar, how are we gonna market this property? I've got a page that talks about intelligent pricing, right? It just talks about the fact that, you know, we determine, um, the market determines value. You determine how we compete, price to sell versus price to own market range. So if they have an idea when we come in and talk about that marketing strategy and that, that pricing strategy, um, they have an idea of what we're looking at. I also include a page that talks about the different photo options that are available to them from virtual staging to drone photography to 360 degrees, um, you know, shots. I have photo option examples so they know what is being referred to. Talks Amy, about- where did you where did you get this to, to start? Um, where did I get this to start? That is a fabulous question that I don't know the answer to, but I will take it. Um, I, I think I compiled a bunch of different people's listing packets and then we whittled it down to our, our top picks. Okay. Thank you. These Let's see. Back gonna... with, um, those photos. Say that again. I said, I see that you spruced it up with all the photo stuff that you added and a few other things. I don't remember it looking like that. Um, I think it's been this way for a while now since probably, well, since maybe like 2019, maybe oh. 2020. So yeah, um, I missed out on a listing one time because I didn't mention that we had the ability to virtually stage. They're like, oh, we, we really liked you guys, but we ended up choosing an agent that had the ability to virtual stage the property. And I was like, we could have done that. So now then I updated it with all the different photo options and what our package includes, right? So I usually pay for the photos for my listings and that's like your basic package. But if you want additional options, I made sure to include those. We talk about home staging, the important, the impact on buyers. Um, and the different types of staging available. And then we have a page that just talks about like other services. Here's some other things that we can offer, you know, pre-listing inspections. Um, you get your own personal app that keeps track of scheduled showing appointments, an electronic lockbox that limits access to licensed agents only. Um, we may recommend the following services, roof inspection, um, whole house inspection, whole home deep cleaning, carpet cleaning, carpet stretching and replacement, additional assistance with staging, um, home painting, landscape handyman. We have recommendations for these services mentioned above. 
And we can also make recommendations on paint colors and carpet choices that we have found to appeal to the typical home buyer, right? So we're just building our value there with different things that we can offer them. I did put a link to this in the chat box and you should be able to view it if you want to edit it and make it your own. You just have to save it to your Google Drive and then you can edit the copy. Here is our listing agreements. It just goes through what to expect. And then I would include a copy of the market analysis report. Yes, Kim. When it comes to staging, um, besides virtual staging, how do you handle that? When do you stage? Who pays for it? Um, how do you have that conversation with sellers? And, and how necessary do you think it is, especially in this current market? Yeah, so it all depends on the property itself, what is recommended on staging. We may recommend that, hey, as far as staging goes, it may just be that, hey, we want to rearrange some of your furniture. It doesn't flow well. We'd like you to get rid of some things. It's often that I walk through a listing and I make recommendations on, hey, you've got three dressers in a bedroom. We need to remove those and we need to move the bed this way. We need to move the dresser over there. So, right. So it may just be recommendations on how to rearrange the rooms and set them up so that they flow well and they look more spacious, including like the living room. You want to make sure that people can like walk in and walk through and move about easily. So it may be that. Um, it may be that we recommend, um, you know, on a vacant home. I personally, I'm not a fan of virtual staging. Um, I think that seeing, seeing staging material in a on a picture and then you get to the property, it's hard to visualize that and they're not looking at the pictures. So if you're gonna do virtual staging, I recommend um, maybe getting the virtual staging photography printed on like a poster board size and like posting it in each room so that people can visualize what furniture looks like. Um, I, if, if it's a vacant home or it's, it's really rare that I would bring staging furniture into an occupied property. I'm just going to do the best with what they've got, mainly because um, if I'm going to stage somebody's property that's occupied, it's probably because their stuff isn't very well taken care of to begin with. And then I run the risk of bringing staging furniture in and then also kind of destroying that in the process. So we don't want that to happen. Um, so it's not very often that I would recommend staging a occupied home. I may just recommend some moving of furniture, rearranging the furniture, elimination of maybe some things as they're preparing to move. And then also may recommend like a new comforter or some different bed pillows or some throw pillows. I may even bring something like that in for them um, just to help them spruce it up to make it look more appealing. As far as occupied on a vacant home, um, I think staging is really key on a vacant home. And there's some homes that it's like you walk in and a buyer would have no problem seeing where furniture should go and what should go on. Um, even then, uh, you know, staging is usually a good idea. It just makes it feel warmer. It makes it sell faster. It's their proven stats that a staged home sells faster. And as far as who pays for it, um, that's dependent on the listing and what the commission is. Like if they want a lower commission, they may be paying for the staging themselves. If it's a higher commission, I may cover the cost of that staging. That would be included as part of that, that ex higher rate. Um, and I always recommend if you're going to stage a property, stage kind of the um, kitchen family room or living room area. And oftentimes like the master bedroom, but mainly that main living area. And because um, it just feels warmer as people walk through. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. I have a, a listing that is vacant um, and I really wanted to stage it, but it's a Zillow lead. And so my commission is a lot less than it would have been. Um, and so I opted not to stage it and I did virtual staging and I'm kind of kicking myself. But at the same time, you know, it was going to be at least 1500 bucks to stage that, which was like a third of my commission <laughs> at that point. <laughs> Yeah. So, right. So a Zillow lead, it's a good conversation to have with the seller. Like, Hey, I really think that, um, you know, staging would help move your property, especially in this market. It's not 20 offers on every property. We're trying to get a move faster, but you know, we've got, they've got some competition out there and a staged home may sell faster. The cost for that staging is going to be about 1500. 
Um, you know, I've negotiated a good deal with a stager. And so I've got the cost down to about $1,500. Um, that would be something that you would be responsible for. Are you interested in doing that, right? Just having that conversation with them, building up the fact that staging does help sell, that you think it would be recommended. Um, and then seeing if that's something they're interested in doing, especially on a situation like that, where your, your commission is being eaten away by Zillow. Got it. Thanks. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm going to include a market analysis support report. Notice I don't say like a comparative market analysis. People get lost in the words. So I usually say like market analysis or, um, you know, you could say the property value report or listing price analysis report. Like you could call it something creative and fancy that makes it sound official, but helps them to understand what that is. Um, I'm going to include that from the MLS. So I always include a copy of that with this. I include a copy of the listing agreement. Usually it's a blank listing agreement, but I do include a copy of it so that they know kind of what to expect and what that listing agreement looks like, right? Again, we have some sellers that like to read every line and they should, all of your sellers should read the full contract, right? They should know what they're signing. Um, and so this way they have a chance to review it in person before and take their time, read through it at their leisure before we sit down at the table and I ask them to sign it. Um, I have a homework section. Most of this stuff I eliminate um, now because I've got the seller questionnaire form on Google Forms that I have them fill out for me where I send it electronically. Um, but still, you know, I have an extra key at the front door. Um, I'm going to adjust this homework packet complete so they don't have to do that. But any copies of inspections, appraisals, and additional reports completed on the property that you have in your possession, right? Have all that stuff ready for me when we sit down for our listing appointment. Um, in addition, I often include a copy of like the SPQ and the TDS. So if they have a chance to read through that, I usually ask them to fill it out through Glide. But that way they have a hard copy of the information contained in that report so they can kind of review it and look through it. So that's the end really of the listing, um, the pre-listing packet. And then there's a congratulations page at the end. You're on your way to getting your home sold. We look forward to success, successful sale, right? In addition, oh, there's also this tips for successful showings, right? Here are some inexpensive ways to maximize your home appeal. Keep the grass freshly cut, remove all yard clutter, probably a fresh uh, paint, so wooden fences, right? So this is the exterior the interior, um, remove excess wall hangings, furniture, and knickknacks, consider a temporary storage unit, cleaner paint walls and ceilings, shampoo carpets, clean and organize cabinets, repair plumbing leaks, including faucets and drain traps, clean light fixtures for showings, right? So I would include that. The part that I don't include any longer is this communication, um, right? Seller's preferred name, birthday, cell phone, secondary phone, email, preferred contact method. How do they like to be communicated with? Any additional sellers on titles, kids' names, ages, birthdays, pets in home, type and name, any showing preferences or restrictions. Um, do, 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 do. Our expectations of you, response for showing request and request for information in a timely manner. Contact us if you have any questions regarding the sale of your home. Here, this one asks for electricity, information about utilities and HOA. Again, this all goes out in my questionnaire that I can send electronically now, so I don't usually include these pages. Um, your home, favorite features of your home, what should we know about the community or neighborhood, systems and components, water heater, tankless, yes or no, gas or electric, your installed size, HVAC, dual zone, heater, gas or electric, you're installed, windows, dual pane, roof type, um, you're installed, water conserving features, energy efficient features, any other updates and upgrades, right? So I'm just trying to get an idea of how to market their property appropriately. Um, does it stay or does it go? This goes out to them now in an email format where we talk about what stays with the property and what goes with the property. So I don't include those four pages there. So that would be my pre-listing packet that I sent out and what I include. So I include the pre-listing packet, the market analysis of their property. Um, and then I also include a copy of the listing agreement and copies of the disclosures that they're going to be required to fill out and answer questions for. Not with the intention that they're actually going to fill them out, but just so that they have a copy of them. Although sometimes they do fill them out. 
Um, so that's kind of how I have my uh, pre-listing setup done. Any questions about that before we move on to the listing presentation inside of OneDesign? And you said send a blank send a list of the blank of the listing agreement. Um, you were kind of echoey just then. You were kind of echoey just then. Now it's all echoey. Now it's all echoey. Sorry. I'm going to have to think really hard. I'm going to have to think really hard. Okay, so the okay. listing so agreement that I include is blank. Does that answer your question? Does that answer your question? Yes. Fabulous. All right. So yeah, I usually don't fill it out. Then we can fill it out while we're sitting at the table with all the pertinent information, but I usually don't fill it out ahead of time. Amy? All right. Yes. I have a yes. question. Uh, so how how do you send it through Google Forms? Or how do you do that? Because I don't know how to do any of that. Yeah. So yeah. I have, so a, I have, I have a questionnaire, questionnaire. And it gives you, I've created it, it in Google you, Forms. And when you create something in Google Forms, it gives you a link to share. Google. So then it would go out in an email with an email attached email. questionnaire. Attached questionnaire. After we sign that listing yeah. agreement, and then it asks them about yeah. all the seller's yeah. information, yeah. Give yeah. Showing yeah. restrictions, yeah. and then it takes them through yeah. every yeah. question yeah. that I'm going to have to allow to, to input that listing into the MLS. It asks them all those questions. So, all those I'm, all those all those questions. Questions. so I'm no longer guessing so at the no answer to the biggest question. The sellers are actually answering that for me. But it's a link. It gives you a link. It gives you a link. So you created in Google Docs? Or do you um, upload it? To so I created it in Google Forms. I mean, Google Forms. Okay. Yep. So we you did. have, can you upload it to Google Forms? You yeah, cannot. You have to create you it cannot. inside you of have Google to create Forms. It in okay. Uh, do you have that? Can you share what you send them? Do you have that? Yes. Maybe yes. while I pull that up, the echo Maybe while I pull that up, the echo Otherwise, I'm gonna have to like bounce out and come back in. Bounce out and come back in and see this. Thank you. Yep. Hold on, we're waiting very patiently. And I think the echo has stopped. Is the echo better? Fabulous, no echo as of now. Just waiting patiently for it to sort through my docs to find it and it's not there. That's not nice. Um, we can we can do it at our meeting tomorrow if, if you want to move on. Okay, I'll find it again. I know that there was a. I don't need your form. No. Um, I know that, that, uh, that no, people I, had asked about it previously, and they were having problems accessing it on the. So I'm gonna I'll find it later today and repost it in the foxhole as well for everybody that's on today. All right, um, so back to the Realty One listing presentation. So again, this is in your One Design Creative Studio. Um, and this allows you to edit it. So it's a marketing proposal. So you would come in here and you can do it because it's um, 
done as a listing presentation when you download it. I believe you can download it as a PowerPoint presentation. You could actually present it on your computer versus um, you could also print it out. And I think this one's the same as what we discussed with the buyer presentation a couple weeks ago. Um, number one, their system is always pausing out on me. There we go. Um, where if there's some extra stuff in here that I would probably eliminate from this packet. Um, number one, when we're going into a listing presentation, we really want it to be about the seller. We want to dig into their why. Why are they looking to move? What's their motivation? And we want to stay on that. We want to touch on who we are and, um, you know, validate uh, who we are as far as a real estate agent and a company goes. But we don't need like 10 pages talking about that. Um, it's just when it becomes all about me, 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 then the sellers don't feel like you're hearing them and listening to them. So you want to back up who you are and who Realty One is and, you know, utilize that and share your story in whatever means necessary, which means that if you're an experienced agent and you have, you know, 20 plus closings last year or the last 12 months or whatever, like we can highlight the number of families served versus if you're a new agent. You may want to capitalize and, and focus in on Realty One as a whole versus your own track record, right? So it's all in how you spin the story is what gets shared. So um, just kind of keep that in mind, but you can update it anytime you click on these um, boxes. It allows you to go in there. You can edit the client name, right? So here you could put in Amy Vitard is my client and you can update the date with today's date, right? So we want to go in there and update it. Um, they've got the one manifesto, right? You've got the six C's, commission, um, coaching, community, um, culture, connect, care, the power of one, I feel like this is not, oh yeah, it is. All right. It feels more like you're selling it to another agent at the top, but um, here's where it talks about like stay informed, expanded digital reach with list hub, right? We've got able to create. So it's got some tools in there in your tool chest. So you could talk about those things or you could eliminate that page. Here's where you could put in your bio. I do like the layout and the look of this one. It looks very clean and nice and fancy, which is cool. Um, you want to update it with client testimonials. If you don't have your own client testimonials, you could go look at if Realty One Fox has client testimonials. You could utilize those as long as they're not agent specific. Otherwise, you could just eliminate those altogether. Not a big deal. Um, why we are number one, you may want to leave that page in there. You may want to take it out. It's up to you. Similar listings. So here's where you would put in, um, maybe uh, some information about their home or the comparable homes. Here's where they have in like the, the recent sales of comparable homes. So they can see kind of what the competition is. Features that will sell your home. Marketing strategy. I would, if I hadn't seen the property before, I would probably eliminate some of these. Although I do like, kind of this layout for the comparables. It looks a little nicer than printing like a report up from Barry's or printing like the cloud CMA report. So it's kind of a nice, it just requires more work because you got to pull over the input from similar listings. Um, your marketing strategy, make sure you update this, right? So this, again, we're just adding that value add. How are we setting us up for success? Determining the price and preparing to sell, location, condition, economic trends, supply and demand, strategic negotiations. Keep in mind that you need to update these blurbs with something, right? So you can like do your research and put it in there. Um, you could put something like, you know, the market determines the listing price or, you know, something clever that you could throw in there in that blurb, but you do want to make sure you go in there and edit this. Let's get started. Number one, competitive market analysis. Um, 
determine list price, listing agreement and disclosure, initiate the marketing, marketing plan, install electronic lockbox, install yard sign. I kind of like it because it gives you the, st the steps, although I'd probably tweak them just a little bit. So I think that oftentimes sellers are hesitant to move forward because they don't know what happens next. They don't feel informed. And so I think informing them, like, here's how the process is going to work is a good idea. Maximize online exposure. Here's where it talks about like all the different places that it gets marketed out to online. Pricing theory, right? What you think happens the longer your home is on the market versus what really happens the longer your home is on the market, right? It's not the longer your home is on the market, the price goes up. It's the longer your home's on the market, the price goes down. Wah, wah, wah. So that's a nice graph explaining that. Make sure you update the little... Um, paragraph, pricing versus profit, right? Home seller timeline, realtor, prepare, receive, under contract, inspections, negotiate, appraisals, move. Um, I would probably combine this time, this uh, timeline maybe with the other one of the steps to go on market and then what happens. Home search process for steps, looked online for properties. I would probably keep this page out unless it was necessary. Like my seller's like, hey, are you gonna post it in the paper? And I'd be like, well, as you can see here, like nobody looks in newspapers or magazines or home buying guides for selling a home, <laughs> buying a home, <laughs> right? Um, the power of media. So again, this is going through, it's got a lot of good information, but it's almost too drawn out in my opinion. Um, I'm a high D though. So you got to look at it from that standpoint is I like less is more like, let's just get through it and get to the meat of it. And this is a lot of fluff. And so for the right client, this might be good. Like somebody who needs a lot of reassurance and a lot of help, their personality is like, oh, I want all the details. They may want all of these pages versus your high D client. So again, we're always going to tweak that seller presentation for where your clients are at and what their personality types are. So we need to kind of fish that out from them on the phone by answering questions, asking questions and kind of seeing what kind of answers they like or what kind of answers they're giving you, right? So if, if I'm asking questions and getting a lot of yes and no questions on the phone, then I know they probably are just like, let's get through it versus if I ask them a question like, oh, and what did you think your home, um, did you have an idea of where you think your home, you would like to list your home? You know, what price? And they're like, oh yeah, we've actually been looking at all the neighborhood information and reviewing, you know, we talked to the neighbors that just sold their house. And there's another one around the corner that's listed. Now I know that I'm not working with a high D here. I'm working with somebody who's more analytical and has like dug into the research and they're gonna want more information. Does that make sense to everybody? Yes, ma'am. Okay, I tend to lean more towards like less is more, but sometimes we need to cater to our personality types that we're working with and give them more if that's what they like. Here's just an extra custom page that you can add in. They added a couple of those that you can customize. Listing notes. Um, thank you. They've got some extra pages that you can utilize depending on what you like. So overall, they've got a lot of really good things in here. Obviously, this is in here because people and agents are utilizing it and it's bringing success. Otherwise, they would tweak it. That's why it's in this, um, the creative guide, right? Um, you may also reach out, like if you're part of the, any of the referral groups or any of those, ask, ask some of those agents if they'd be willing to share their listing presentation. I don't know how open they would be, but you might get some agents that share what they utilize. The big thing is when you go into your listing appointment, um, you really want it to be more consultative and you want to ask questions and listen. You want it to be about the sellers. You want to know, again, what their motivation is, um, why they're looking to sell so that you can keep them focused on that motivation, right? And we want to be um, empathetic 
to their motivation to sell. Some people, um, like my sister, for instance, when they had to move out of Colorado Springs, I set them up with a couple different agents for referrals. And one of the agents came in and he was like, I'm so excited to sell your home. This is so exciting. Hire me. <laughs> and my sister was not excited about moving. So, right. So understanding their motivation, whether they're excited about the move, whether they're not excited about the move and being empathetic to that super important because we want to make sure that the seller understands that we know where they're at and that we empathize with that, whether they're excited about the move or whether they're not excited. Oftentimes we've got properties that are selling because somebody has passed away, right? Like a parent or somebody has passed away and now they're they're getting ready to sell that property. And that property holds a lot of memories and a lot of sadness, and a lot of happy times, but they're not necessarily excited about it. So we don't always want to go in with this, like, I'm going to get it sold. We can do this. Like, let's hammer away at it. Sometimes it's just, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry for your loss. I know this must be a really hard time that you're going through. Where do you need help? right? Where can I help you? Right. And just being available to them. And so you definitely want to take the situation into account when you walk into those listing appointments and just be a, a um, resource for them of help and assistance, you know, up front, like have all those resources in your back pocket. Do they need junk removal? Do they need carpet cleaners? Do they need carpet stretching? Do they need house cleaners? Do they need somebody to come in and help them sort through their house, right? Do they need an estate sale? And then think about all those things that you might need when you're getting ready to sell a property and have relationships with those people so that you can be the resource and the expert in everything that they need. I once had a listing and they were missing the front drawer front on their um, their vanity and it was in one of those built-in vanities, you know, that the builder puts in. So it wasn't like, just pull it out and replace it. They didn't have a lot of extra money. So I actually knew a cabinet maker. So we took them one of the other drawers and they matched it for me. Right? So super simple. It was like a hundred bucks. They made me a drawer front. So, right. So think about what people might need. Handymen, contractors, whatever that might be. And have those resources because you're going to get more listings by coming in and being knowledgeable, by asking questions and listening, and then by providing them the resource and the help that they need in order to move that property to get it on the market. Um, then you, you are just going on like, Realty One is so great. I'm so great. Here's what I've done. Here's what we can do, right? All that. The seller cares a little bit about that, but they really care more about the relationship. Thoughts and questions? You've left us speechless. I've left you speechless. <laughs> There's so many people on today and so little interaction. Um, so I shared my pre-listing packet with y'all in the chat box. So you should be able to find that. Um, I will find the Google form that I have and figure out how to share that appropriately where you guys can actually like um, go in there and make a copy of it to edit it or make it your own. And then this guide here is inside of um, your one design creative studio is where you can go in there and steal this. And again, I think this packet has a lot of really good information in it. Um, and so I think that there's a lot of things that you could utilize in this packet. I would probably take out like, well, number one, this is just, they have different cover pages depending on what you like the looks of, right? So you just eliminate the page that you don't like as far as the cover page goes. And then, um, so that's like the first four pages or so. And then um, and then you can decide what you wanna keep through the rest of it. But it looks nice and clean and nice. If I were gonna utilize this one, I probably wouldn't print it up on my printer at home. I would probably send it over to like Staples or someplace where they can print it for me. <laughs> and if you had your regular listing packet, you could even like have staples like bind up 10 of them or so, right? So that you have it, it looks official and nice and and um, and professional when you go to your listing appointment. Any other questions, thoughts, things you want to add, things that you've done well that have worked well for you? No. 
Nothing. Make sure when you have that listing appointment, it's always best to get the listing agreement signed then and there, right? We gave them a copy of it. I'm going to bring a copy of that free listing packet with me to the listing presentation in case they lost it. They didn't get a chance to look at it, whatever it is. Copy of that listing present or that listing agreement. It's always best to get it signed when you're sitting there at their table. Um, if they offer you something like water, please accept it. It's a it's a relational thing that if somebody's like, oh, would you like something? It's very respectful to be like, oh yeah, absolutely. Can I get some water? Right? Even if you're like scared to touch their house, it's still good to accept the water and take at least a couple sips of it, please. Okay, it's very relational. Get the listing agreement signed. If they're like, oh, but we had other appointments with other agents, um, or we have an appointment later today, you can be like, well, is there anything that I presented today that would cause you to not want to work with me? Were there any questions I didn't answer? Was there something in my plan that you did not like? And they're like, no, it all looked pretty good. Be like, perfect. What's the name of the agent that you have to meet with later today? Why don't we go ahead and get started on this? Get the listing agreement taken care of. I will call the other agent and cancel your appointment for you. Right? Take the initiative to cancel it. Make yourself the only person available to them. If they have objections, Anastasia, did you have something? Yeah. So if it's um, a probate or something like that, should they have paperwork for us so we can see that? Yeah. And so it's a probate or a trust or the properties held in a corporation, they should have the documents available to show that they're the ability to sign on behalf of the trust or the corporation. Or if it went through probate, they should be able to, if it's gone through the court system and been deemed that they can sell the property, you should have, they should have a document stating that they are, um, that it's been, it's been, I don't remember the official word wording of it, but that it's the court has deemed it okay to sell the property and that the court has established them as the, um, there's a specific name for it when somebody can sign on behalf of the, the probate court. And so should we just go into the APN and see who the home is listed under? Yeah, so absolutely like the great. Just, the one I just wrote an offer on, it was um, Johnny Smith. But when I looked at the documents that they had in Home Light, it said um, the estate of John E. Smith and then the other, the daughter signed. Yeah. So that's how I did so, the documents. Yeah, so if, um, right, so on a buyer transaction, you can always look at what they have on the disclosures for a, for a listing. Um, you want to know who they are in relation to the person on title. In fact, I had somebody contact me. There's a lot of scams going on right now. Um, so I had somebody contact me to list their property the other day. And the first thing that I did was I went to the title records and looked up who was on title, who was not the person who called me. And it was not a trust. And then I went to Facebook and I looked up the people that were on title and asked them if they still own the property. Um, while I was still communicating with the other person that asked me to list their property, it was not the person's property that was trying to get me to list it. So there's a lot of scams going on these days. Um, also when it comes to like trusts and stuff, sometimes there's disputes and somebody, you know, one sibling may be trying to sell it out from the other sibling. So you absolutely want to make sure that if you look it up and it shows that it's in a trust or a corporation, um, part of setting up your pre-listing appointment appropriately is going to be having a, a call with that person that you scheduled the appointment with and just saying, and in addition, please make sure or shooting them over a message, please make sure you have the documentation um, showing that you are the signer for, you know, sellyourhome.com or whatever it might be, right? Whoever's on title or the Anastasia Minor Trust, right? So just make sure you have those documents available. So asking them to do that. I have a question since we're talking about trust. So for, yeah. um, for a seller who has their house in a trust, um, when they get the proceeds, like the, you know, the, from the sale of the home, do they need to have an account that's set up under the trust so that it goes directly into that? Or they do. Um, they title to, is going to require you. So if, if that property is held in a trust, title is going to require those funds to go into an account with the name of the trust on it or they're gonna issue a check 
in the name of the trust, not the trustees. So you will need to have that set up. That is the number one thing sellers and trusts um, generally holds up getting their proceeds is that they oftentimes do not have an account set up in the name of the trust. So it's really easy to take your trust documents, go into your bank and set up a a free checking account or a savings account um, for the trust. Super simple to do, but you will need to have that. Maciel, I'm sorry that I didn't advise you of that sooner. <laughs> well, I knew I had to do that beforehand. And then I just never did it when we set up our trust. And it's been it's like, it'll be a year at the end of this month. And I'm like, yep. whoops, better go and get on that right now. Welcome to just about everybody who's ever set up a trust. They do <laughs> not set up the account. So yeah, they will need a account in the name of the trust to have it auto deposited or um, the check will be issued. So then you're going to have to go in and prove to the bank that you can cash the check. Thank you. Yep. Other questions, thoughts, comments? When you walk away from your listing appointment with your signed listing agreement, the sellers should know when to anticipate to hear from you next. Not I'll be in touch shortly, but I will, you know, if maybe it's Friday. You'll be like, I'm going to, I'll be in touch with you on Monday with this, you know, with the date for pictures or the date for the pre-inspections, or um, I'll have a list to you by this afternoon of things that you owe, the things that we can talk to, that we talked about that need to be done prior to getting your property on the market, or I'll have right? So we just want to make sure that we have scheduled when that next communication is and what they should expect. And that should continue every time you talk with your sellers or potential sellers, they should know when to hear from you next. If they didn't sign that listing agreement at the listing appointment and they had another appointment later that day, or they're going to think about it, then it'll be, hey, perfect. I will check in with you tomorrow afternoon around three o'clock. Does that work for you? Right. Or if they're like, oh, well, my husband doesn't get home until late tonight. So we'll probably won't review the information until tomorrow. Then it might be, OK, perfect. Then I'll touch base with you. Today's Wednesday. So I'll touch base with you Friday at three o'clock. Does that work? Right. So plan that schedule, that follow up and then put it into your schedule so that you make sure you do it on time. Right. Set the alarm. Always have a planned interaction for the next interaction. Fabulous. Well, that's all I've got for you all today, unless you have additional questions. Um, at the, you're welcome, Ralph. Abby, at the beginning, um, right above where I shared my listing presentation, she put the attendance link. Let's see if I can copy that and put it down below, or otherwise she'll do it for me. In case you, oh, in case you weren't on at the beginning. Let's see. She probably beat me to it. There it is. It's at the bottom now. Log your attendance with her. And um, since I clicked on it, now it's pulled up on my screen. Keep in mind that there's a bottom section that says, what other trainings or classes would you like to see being conducted? Please make suggestions in there. Um, we always have like one upper level training per month that happens for this month. It's next week. We have, um, we're talking about YouTube. We have another agent from another Realty One office coming on to talk about how he utilizes YouTube for lead generation. Generation. It's going to be fabulous. So if there's other trainings that you'd like to see, throw it in there, even if it's something basic like, hey, can you go over how to how to access berries again, because we haven't had access to it for two weeks, and I've forgotten how to utilize it, like whatever it might be, or I've never knew how to utilize it in the first place, um, you know, throw it in there, and then we'll make sure we get it on the schedule. I am working on the schedule for September, October, November, we're coming up on it quick. That'll take us through the end of the year. All right, everybody have a fabulous day. If you need anything, give me a holler.